Thank you. Good morning, um, Alma. Thank you for joining Prancing Ponies Foundation and doing this interview with us. Um, we're really excited to have you and I uh, can't wait uh, to have you partake some of your inspirational life story um, to a lot of the women who are participating in our program and receiving grants. So um, let me go ahead and start with an introduction, if that's okay. Yes. Absolutely. Great. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, too, um, I want to introduce Alma Liliana Borocchio, Borocchio, right? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, Alma is a model example of an exceptional administrator and role model for our community. With incredible drive to succeed, she recently completed the fundraising and volunteer management certification program at UC Berkeley Extension in 2018, paid for by her company's founder. She graduated from the Mujeres de H in spring of 2022 and is currently part of the Propel Next pilot program of the Center for Creative Leadership. Alma has also served on the EOYDC's leadership team, ensuring seamless business continuation while the president and CEO was on sabbatical. Professionally respected, she was awarded EOYDC's Outstanding Employee Award more than once since it was created seven years ago. Alma's ex exemplary leadership established a high school partnership providing internships for Latina X students and further engaging them in the EOYDC community. She persisted through high school even while a pregnant teen and giving birth in her senior year. Despite her husband initially not believing that school was for women, he supported her as she became the first college graduate in her family. Alma supports her family's education by volunteering at their schools and providing, excuse me, and participating in young Latino community events by leading city, citizenship immigration events and mentoring. Let's welcome Alma. Thank you. I'm really honored to be, you know, doing this interview with you today and just give you my words of inspiration to a lot of women that sometimes, you know, you need to hear people like us to be like, oh, I can feel, you know, inspired by what they, you know, their story and just understanding that it's okay. You know, sometimes life gets challenging, but, you know, there's always something in the other side of the grass. Absolutely. Absolutely. So maybe you can tell us, um, how old were you when you got married and had your children and were you um, inspired or discouraged um, by, yeah. by that? Yeah, so I was actually really young. I was um, 16 going on 17 years, so I was not even a, an adult yet when I got, you know, my husband slash future, you know, but my boyfriend, future um, husband move into or my parents' house because, you know, before I even um started my senior year, it was like the summer. So I kind of like, I turned out that I was pregnant. So he moved in with me because of course I needed my parents' support. I was not old enough to get married. I remember at that time we were trying to get married, but then, you know, legally to get married is 18. So we had to wait until the following year in November of 2003. By then I was already 18 and I have my daughter and I had already completed my senior year by that time when I got married it was like I was already a mother I was getting married and I was already like going to college so it was kind of like I was doing so much but then at the same time it was like so I was so young like you know I was barely getting ready to be an adult but here I was an adult doing adult stuff I was not sure how I was able to handle all these things in my life I just knew that I was much, I'm a mature person. I feel like God had trusted me with all this. I always had in my mind that I wanted to, you know, be the first one in college to be like done with school. Cause since, you know, my parents, my mom just did um, elementary and my father um, just went to like the first year in high school. I, at that point, I feel like I was doing a lot, but I knew that I had to like stand up for what I believe in since I was young. I felt like I needed to do stuff that I felt like that's important for me. 
especially because at home I was the oldest sibling so I had to take care of my siblings and my friends had to work and they had to provide a better future for us since my parents had come to um, the United States from Mexico since you know they felt they needed to provide better for us. I think since I was married at an early age it kind of helped me because I had a determination where I felt that I needed to stand up for what I believe and regardless that I was married and had a kid I needed to make sure that I continue with my college education because I feel the key for me to be successful with anything that I did personally or professional was to complete my college degree. I didn't want to be as addicted as that since I was a um, parent at an early age that I will drop off from high school and don't go to college. So I feel like being like Mary and also like having a kid early, that was like my determination. Like, I felt like the mentality was that I needed to do the opposite of what people were saying to me. And how did your children or did your children and husband inspire you to keep going? Because I, I mean, I know it couldn't have been easy for you to have so much responsibility so young um, and, and also be very determined to still get your college degree. Um, did your did your children, did your husband, did your family, did your in-laws support you through that process? Um, well, I know that since I got pregnant with my first um, child before like turning 17, I knew I wanted to be, you know, be the reason to like complete college. However, you know, I felt like at times it was a stressful because, you know, I wanted to go to school, uh, achieve all this stuff, you know, for me to be a successful person. But it was hard, like I had to go to school, you know, I had to finish my high school while being pregnant and learning how to be, a, a, you know, being married and taking all the care I needed because I had a baby in my womb. But then at the same time, I felt I did get the support after we had several conversations with my husband that in order for me and him to have a successful career for our kids, the only way that we could do that is by him supporting me, my college education and helping me with my child. So I had to do like a, like a lot of stuff during my, my regular college years. It's kind of like, I will, I decided to go to, um, it was Hill College at that time. Now they don't even have Hill College. So I had to go, I went there to do my social degree, but they offer evening classes. So at that time, since the baby was small, I only took evening classes so that I can be at home during the day, taking care of, you know, my wife duties, like cleaning the house, cooking, and just taking care of the baby. And at nighttime, I was a student. I had to go to school and prepare myself. So it was challenging because I didn't get to be like a normal, you know, young adult that just, you know, work and go to school and just like worry about myself. I had other stuff I had to worry about myself. The good thing about that during that time I feel like if I got pregnant again, I would not have enough time to do the stuff that I was trying to do, like focus in college. So I decided that maybe I didn't want to have another kid at that time, just because I felt like I want to give it all my, what I could to my college, because you know, I was so struggling. So I actually didn't have kids to like all the, all my twenties, I didn't have kids. For some reason, like after seven years, like I, I stopped like, you know, taking care of myself just because I felt like, oh, now it's a good time that maybe, you know, I will have another kid. But then unfortunately, I didn't get pregnant. I actually got pregnant like 14 years later when my daughter was 14 and like almost finishing middle school, I got pregnant. And for some reason, I got like back to back kids, you know, by the time my kid was one, my boy, my second, then I end up having another one, like, you know, less than two years apart. However, I feel like my kids has always been that my determination to do stuff, like keep learning and do the best I can. Cause I feel whatever I do is gonna impact them. Oh, right now my daughter's on the background. Um my I feel like if I if my see my kids see a mother that can like accomplish so much and don't let a struggle stop her they're going to see that and that's going to make them, you know, move on on their life as they get older, you know? So I feel like the more I see my kids, the more I get inspired, especially my youngest, you know, she was born in, in 2019. 
And she was my last one because I knew after that I didn't want to have kids just because I, I felt like I didn't want to quit my career, but then I didn't want to like quit at home. So I felt three kids were enough. However, my youngest, um, she was born, but before she was even born, she was a fighter because I'm um, in the womb. They told me she had a lot of stuff happening. Um, she did probably would need to go through surgery when she was born. Um, her she had a heart condition. So at two weeks old, um, her order got repaired just because they felt like she needed to get that fixed in order to sort of right. So I felt after that, that even inspired more just because I felt okay. This little girl and this, like, you know, she wants to come to this war and she's already dealing with so much. And even when she came, you know, she was only two weeks when she got her first surgery and she's already four and has been through five surgeries. So I feel like I cannot quit. Like whatever I need to do, if I need to continue to go back to school and be a better person, like that's what's going to help me. Like that's what keeps me going every day, my kids and my family. Oh, that's so inspirational. Wow, that's, you are really incredibly strong and determined. Um, so, you know, you talked a little bit about how you managed uh, through college, how high school and how you were going to night school to get through college. I mean, that's a lot of work. Did you find that you had um, people around you, friends or family who uh, were discouraging and how did you overcome that? Um, at the beginning, I know um, when, of course, you know, I'm like starting my senior year and I'm a pregnant, you know, senior. Um, I did went to Casamo, which is in Oakland. A lot of people assume since I was going to kind of like a ghetto school, a public school, they felt like, oh, that's really common over there. But then when they realized that, wait, like she's the only one pregnant at the school, what happening? I'm like, that's not going to stop me. I don't want to be part of the statistics. So I felt like I always wanted to go to school. So yes, I, I understand that people were going to talk about me. Even my family felt like, oh, why is she pregnant? Why is she trying to go to school? She should be at home focusing on her pregnancy, not trying to do something that she cannot accomplish. But then I actually felt like they were like giving me the opposite instead of me trying to, you know, quit me trying to just be at home, me not trying to finish my senior year actually work the opposite like hey no like I'm gonna go to school I'm gonna show those people I'm gonna show them that yes I'm pregnant and yes uh you know it was an early age but it's not gonna be the end for me like I'm gonna go to school and even like before I even um graduated from like from high school I was already enrolled in in November of before my um the end of the summer, like the semester for my senior year, my parents had offered that, yeah, they didn't have a lot of money, but they were willing to support me by paying some of my school. And then the school that I chose actually had like academic scholarships. So I was like, yeah, I know I can do this. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get it paid. I'm going to ask for, you know, all the support I can. It's not going to be easy. But then I felt like I'm not going to listen to family or people that just think that because you're pregnant, you're just going to be dumb, be at home looking cute with your pregnancy. No, that was not who I was. And that was not going to quit because that's what people assumed that I was going to do. Well, that is fantastic. Oh, my gosh. I'm so inspired. You you turned it around. You you took all of that negative energy coming at you and you said, oh, I'm going to use this as fuel to do and accomplish <laughs> everything I want to. I love it. What an inspiring story. So, you know, along the way, though, to you, to, to your um, goal of graduating from college and then getting your additional certifications, all of these things that you've accomplished in your life, um, did you ever struggle with, with self-worth and self-value, like having low self-worth at any point in time? And if so, how did you overcome that? I think at the beginning, to be honest, I feel I did struggle with the self-worth and the self-value, just because I think I was like getting over where I was no longer a teenager and I was becoming an adult. But then at the same time, I felt like sometimes, you know, people's words are more harmful than actually getting beat. Because, you know, once somebody hurts you or beats you up or stuff like that, you know, the marks are going to go away and you're not going to see them. So you're not going to remember. 
However, like the words that people tell you are more painful and they're always, you kind of like get them stuck in yourself. So it's up to you kind of like, if I listen to them, I needed to do something that would not let them like sink in. Like I had to make sure that whatever people were saying or giving comments that I knew is like, no, it's not about me. It's about them, you know? All the statistics and all the people comment about others is like, no, I'm not gonna let them do that. You know, I know who I am. And yes, I made a mistake of being pregnant, you know, my senior year. However, I'm still the person I am. I'm a still good, I'm a good person. I didn't kill nobody. I didn't do nothing, you know, against anything, against anybody. So I felt like, why should I feel doubting myself that I'm not a value to the community or even to my family? You know, I, I feel kind of like, no, I cannot let them, you know, whatever they say impact me. Um, even after college, you know, I was a recent college graduate, so I got my first job as the receptionist. Oh my God, like I heard this comment that the, my family was at a, a family camping site and then they were talking about me. They were like, oh, how come she got a good job as a receptionist? Um, she barely finished school and then she was pregnant and now she has this good job as a receptionist, but she doesn't even have her license. And I'm like, really? It's not even a, a, a driver's job. It's actually answering the phone, you know, making coffee. So that made me be more inspired to be like, no, I'm not gonna let nobody, you know, determine what I'm gonna do in life. Cause it's like, I'm not gonna be value what people think. I'm gonna be value of what I want people to think. So if you are here talking about me, cause you feel like I don't deserve this stuff cause I was pregnant, I get it. But then that's not who I am. So yeah, I did struggle. Even sometimes like I felt when me trying to go to school, it was something when my husband, like his his dad, you know, the sister didn't like go to school. She just finished elementary. My mother-in-law was the same thing. She just finished elementary. So I was even struggling at home because if you think about it, like he was raised with women at home doing the chores, you know, making sure that everything was done at home. And me, I was like the like the opposite. I was working, go to school, taking care of my daughter, you know, cooking, cleaning, doing. I actually was doing more, you know? In my mind, I felt like, don't put me down because you feel like I do stuff less because I work. I'm actually doing more than another. And that has created me to think, it's like, no, I, I'm important. I value myself. And if you don't value me, oh, well, you don't need to be around me. Like I had to like make the decision that is like, I need to do what is best for me. So either you like me, like how I am with all my stuff that you think I'm not uh, doing the way you feel like I have to be doing, just because you know who I, we come from, we're Latinos and a lot of times, you know, they assume you need to kind of follow your husband orders and just be submissive to what they say. No, my husband has grown to understand that I'm not gonna change. And he loves that at me that, you know, it's like, when are you gonna go back to school? When are you gonna do this? You know, are you gonna apply for another job? It's like, what's next for you? Cause he always sees that, I'm not gonna say it. Like even when my daughter was born with the conditions and she was in the hospital for two months, yeah, I told my job is like, yeah, I'm just gonna need six months. And they're like, you're sure you don't need no more time. I'm like, no, and after six months, I went back to work. And even now, yes, I do take time off to, you know, take her to her therapy, to take her to her appointment. And even the time she has gone through surgeries, I take the time I need just to focus that she gets recovery. But when she's recovered, I go back to do my thing. Cause you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to feel that I'm at home where I quit everything to be for my kids. But then my, my kids are not quitting what they're doing. You know, they're struggling and they're trying to overcome their own obstacles. So it's like, if they see that the mama can do it and then they see the mama's not quitting, then that work keeps me going. That is such a, oh my gosh, I am hugely inspired right now. <laughs> um, you are a fierce, fierce woman. <laughs> um, I have one last question for you. Um, how, you know, Prancing Ponies, we provide uh, grants for low-income women to attend workshops, seminars, and conferences. And because you can't, um, 
ask low-income women to sacrifice salary for self-betterment, we also provide them a stipend. How would a program like this support some of the women that in your community there at EOYDC, um, how would a program like that help uh, women? How would it have helped you even um, as you were coming up through your educational uh, career as well as your uh, career career? Um, would a program, how would a, a program like that have helped you? Um, I think it probably had helped me a lot just um, having somebody there to support you and back you up, especially with the financial. Um, sometimes it's hard because it's like if you don't have resources, you don't really know what's out there, what's available. You know, sometimes like like if I was to be growing up and have this organization, of course, I'd probably be thinking, okay, maybe I need to take some course and then I need to have them pay for it just so that I have a better career and more opportunities in life. And also, you know, being part of a network where people care for you and they're willing to pay for you to get educated, for you to learn about all the opportunities that are out there is like, it's amazing. I'd probably be like, okay, sign me up for it right now. Even now, I feel like maybe I need to like sign up for something because I feel like you never stop learning. And then having organizations like yours that provide all those resources for free. I mean, it's like for free, like you don't have to do anything. Um, I probably just have to figure out time. Like time management has always been, you know, my best supporter. So I'd probably be like, okay, maybe I need to like have somebody take care of my kids and I need to go do this workshop and get it paid for free. Because at the end of the day is like, if you don't know what's out there and you don't take advantage of the opportunities that organizations offer to you, then how do you know what you're capable of doing? So I just feel like I see myself as like, I need to be part of the organization, but then at the same time, like I have to be willing to do it and don't take anything for granted. If people have the opportunity to help you out and they're trying to have you do something for your life, take it like just like take it like don't even ask questions I'm like okay sign me up for it um it doesn't matter if the kids you know if you don't have time because your kid or your husband or whoever's in your family is not being supported understand that at the end of the day you have to do what's best for you because if you don't do what's best for you how are you going to support others and your family and sometimes you know it's okay they can be back because you're not with them every day or you're not watching tv with your kids or you're not doing something at home because at the end of the day having that education and having that learning of taking a special workshop or even taking time for your job your employer is gonna love that you know they're gonna love that because you're gonna be a better person at work at home that at the end of the day they're not even gonna care that you're gone for a couple of hours because they know they're gonna get more for you taking time to learn and do stuff productive for your own life because it's like how can you it's like the airports like you know in order for you the the oxygen is kind of like the mask comes they don't say grab it and give it to your husband or give it to your significant person or give it to your kid no like you have to put it on yourself and then help others so it's like i need to take care of this opportunity that you guys have and be like hey like where do i sign up for this opportunity and, you know, promote it, like tell people about it, just so that that's how I feel. Like go to the library, get the resources, tell people the library has a lot of resources. And that I think like, I be telling them about the organization, hey, like you need to sign up for this opportunity. Well, maybe I don't have time, make time. Like you can be watching Netflix all day. Maybe you need to stop watching Netflix for a couple of days and just focus on yourself. Cause it's like, you don't want to die and people be like, oh, she died and even noticed she died. Like, no, oh, I remember her. She was always ready to learn. She wanted to be committed in her relationship, which she was committed at work, you know, with her kids. That's the legacy, like, you want to, like, leave behind. Like, you know, you want people to remember you for all the good things you did. Yeah, you probably did something bad. Like, you took too much of their time to, like, you know, tell them to do stuff positive. But then if nobody tells you and you don't support other people, then was like the point. Like you need to be able to share and tell people so that, you know, more women feel confident and be like, oh, if she did it, I can do it. And, you know, there's no excuses. I just feel like I have to be the driver of my own life. I cannot let nobody be like the driver. Like, no, I'm not a passenger. I'm here to be my own driver. That is so wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. 
I am so sure everyone who hears this interview is going to be so inspired. I know I am inspired, inspired tremendously. I mean, you really are an incredible woman leader and you're doing great work in the uh, community with EOIDC, as well as in your own life and setting the example for your thank children, you. your family, your community. I mean, thank you so much for your time today. It is so invaluable. And yes, you are valued and you are worthy. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alma. Thank you so much.